I uh, reached under my shirt and I pulled out a pistol and showed it to him. And I said, now, you see this? I said, I'm going to put it back in my shirt, my pants, because I don't want anybody to get hurt. That sounds like the work of a hardened criminal. But Freddie Johnson was a professional musician. This was his first in a string of robberies. And it all started with one little pill. I've never felt anything like that in my life. The physical euphoria. His girlfriend, who soon became his wife, introduced him to the powerful drug Dilaudid, a synthetic form of heroin. From his first experience with the opiate, Freddie knew he had crossed the line. I knew that that was something serious. It was just like opening a door that I should have never stepped through. At first, it only took a half of a pill, but then the body built up a, a tolerance to it and it takes more and more. Freddie found a dentist who agreed to write him virtually limitless prescriptions for the drug. He started writing me prescriptions for 600 tablets of Dilaudid every day, six days a week. With that number of pills, Freddie and his wife could fuel their addiction, and then some. What they didn't use themselves, they gave to Freddie's cousin, who sold them. In just no time at all, I was, by most people's standards back then, I was rich. We're supporting our habit, and my cousin was bringing me about uh, 10 or $12,000 a day in cash. Eventually, police caught both the dentist who had written the prescriptions and the pharmacist who supplied the pills. Without a source, Freddie was in a painful situation. The physical pain involved with having to, what they call cold turkey, kick an opiate habit is indescribable. I mean, it's just from the crown of your head to the bottom of your feet, you're in agony. Just and, and nothing, nothing will make it go away except the opiate itself. Then Freddie recalled hearing the name of a wholesale drug distributor. He opened the yellow pages and searched for its address. So I said, okay, I'm going to go rob one of these warehouses. And I had never done anything, you know, a criminal like that. I mean, actually committing a, a, a felony. I just determined that I, I, can't, I can't deal with what's going on and I've got to have some pills. And I went in and robbed them, stole several thousand tablets of Dilaudid. Within about four weeks, I had, to, uh, I, I had to rob another drug warehouse. Over a 10 month period, Freddie robbed 12 warehouses spanning eight states. He raked in between six and seven million dollars worth of prescription drugs and was personally injecting more than 125 tablets a day. Still, he knew what he was doing was wrong. He had been raised by a Christian family and knew about the love of God. Money does not buy you any peace. I had plenty of money, but I never had one moment of peace. I can remember Christians telling me, Freddie, if you don't change, you're going to hell. I know that, I just, I, I'm, I'm on a train that's going too fast to jump off of right now. I knew that it was going to come to a bad end. He was right. It wasn't long before his crime spree came to an abrupt stop. I was out on bond in, uh, in five states. I had I'd gotten picked up on, on some of the charges. Now, once they charged me with one of the robberies, it was kind of like tipping over the first domino. Freddie was convicted of his crimes and sent to prison. He served five years in Texas and 13 in Louisiana. The other states where he was wanted allowed him to serve time concurrent with what he was already doing. And during that time, he and his wife divorced. When you get arrested and, and your freedom is taken away from you, it is a shocking, demoralizing, traumatic experience. Freddie was released when he was 50 years old. He got a job and started attending church. But then he got a double ear infection the doctor, even knowing Freddie's prior addictions, urged him to take a potent painkiller, and he did. I got addicted again as a result of the, uh, the pain medication for the ear infection. For a while, he maintained a seemingly normal lifestyle. He met and married a Christian woman and even helped with a prison ministry through his church. God helped other people through me, but I was not committed to the Lord. When Freddie couldn't get any more refills, 
he robbed a pharmacy. I never thought I would ever do anything wrong again. I could not imagine ever doing something like that again. It just was beyond my comprehension. When the cops showed up at Freddie's house, he wasn't there, but his wife was, and she was shocked. She knew nothing about his addiction. I was clueless. He was um, functioning, working, getting up in the morning, doing everything, um, you know, that someone who doesn't have an addiction does. Freddie turned himself in, knowing he might spend the rest of his life in prison. In a public jail cell, waiting to hear his fate, and in the throes of drug withdrawal, Freddie made an important life decision. I talked to the Lord and I said, look, I've always known who you were and I've always known you existed. I can't take this anymore. And if you're a merciful Lord, which I believe you are, will you please forgive me and please take my life? I cannot stand this pain anymore. I think it was the next day I was able to roll over and get up on my hands and knees and I crawled over to the bunk and I put my head on it and knelt there and I began to pray. God touched my consciousness and, and made me understand that, well, you're going to get through this. When his court date came, Freddie was sentenced to six years. I knew that, you know, the Lord had intervened. Freddie served his time and walked out a new man. He's been drug free now for more than eight years. But the difference is now I have the Holy Spirit dwelling within me. I didn't have that before. And if there is any difference that, that means something, that's the difference. All the other times before, I had, I had never surrendered. He totally submitted to the Lord. Um, he would not make a move without first praying about it. And that's really what a godly man does. After years behind bars, Freddie found true freedom through Christ. Some people say that situations are hopeless and things are hopeless. And I would tell them that that's a lie from the pits of hell. There is hope, whether you know it or not. The Lord Jesus Christ is not the God of a second chance. He's the God of many chances. And hopefully this will touch some people's lives and let them say, wow, I, I, there is a chance for me. I can do this too. Because God's no respecter of persons. If he helped Freddie Johnson, he'll help me.